So the big trailer that we've all been waiting for has finally arrived and it gives us a huge look into The Mandalorian Season 3 including some things which nobody ever expected. So hit that subscribe button for heaps more Mando content and let's get into it. The trailer begins with an interesting hillside shot of a large clan of Mandalorians. We don't know exactly what planet this is, but the tribe of Mandos is most likely to be the children of the Watch. These are the same guys that rescued Din when he was only a young boy during the Clone Wars. It could also be a bunch of new recruits to their clan because we know that most of them got wiped out in the previous episodes. Not to mention they're all wearing a ragtag assortment of armor, meaning they probably had to scavenge for it or pick it from the dead bodies of their fallen brothers. After that, we get a very small shot of Mando and Grogu rushing through hyperspace and Din giving Grogu some very crucial advice. He tells him that being a Mandalorian is not just about combat and fighting, but it's about being able to navigate the galaxy as a Mandalorian. Not an easy task after the Great Mandalorian Purge. They can't live in the same way that they used to and now must be extremely cautious. Next up we arrive on Navarro, and this place is looking absolutely stunning compared to its Season 1 and even Season 2 glow up. I mean, you can tell this is an extremely rich city now just based on the architecture and the high class attire that their leader, Grief Karga, is now wearing. In one of these shots you can even see a white out protocol droid and we saw one of these on Hoth in the Empire Strikes Back and they're always cool to see. On Navarro we see some Kowaki and monkey lizards have moved in, which are the same species as Salacious B. Crumb from Return of the Jedi. Right after that we get an awesome look at the armorer forging more armor and Mando telling her that he will in fact accept her quest. He will return to the ruined wasteland of Mandalore to atone for his sins. As Mando leaves Pelumoto's shop we see a huge amount of fireworks erupting from the Mos Eisley city below, meaning they're celebrating something huge. Maybe they're celebrating the capture of some Outer Rim Imperial warlord, and maybe it's about Moff Gideon himself. After that though we get something absolutely huge a massive live action return to Coruscant. We did see Coruscant in Andor, but this depiction here looks much closer to the prequels Coruscant look, and damn does it look good. In the traffic lanes above the city, we see Dr. Pershing riding his way to an unknown location. I think this definitely has something to do with Moff Gideon's capture, and maybe he's going to visit Masamita. Of course, at this point in the timeline, Palpatine is dead, and we know from the Aftermath novel series that Coruscant has been plunged into lawlessness after the fall of the Empire. I wonder if they'll keep that world building from the novels, because Coruscant looks pretty fine from these shots, but we'll just have to wait and see. I mean hey, they did pull Cobb Vanth from the Aftermath novel, so maybe they'll honor that. After that though, we get something extremely chilling. We get a warning from Carson Teva telling us that something dark is brewing in the shady underbelly of the galaxy, even in the remote and unreachable unknown regions. And if action is not taken now, it will be too late to stop. What is this threat? Well, it is of course talking about the formations of the First Order. We know that the most trusted advisors and allies of Palpatine were given coordinates to jump to after his death as part of Operation Cinder, and there at those coordinates they built up and created the First Order. After that, they would then return to the main galaxy and wreak absolute havoc and terror on its citizens. Now, next we get the absolute smallest shots of Mando standing in Bo-Katan's palace on Mandalore. If you've seen the other trailers from Celebration and other places, you know exactly what goes on here, but basically they're setting up a showdown between Mando and Bo-Katan for the Darksaber. It's very clear that she wants to hold the Darksaber and rule her people, but will Mando be an easy opponent? That's something to watch very closely. It could also be a complete red herring and they just end up teaming up, but I'd be fine with that too. In the next shot we see Mando picking up an old, battle-hardened and degraded Mandalorian helmet. It's not really clear whose this is, but many people have speculated that it could be that of Tar Vizsla, the first ever Mandalorian to become a Jedi. It was him who was able to break the centuries long feud between the Jedi and the Mandalorians and be accepted into their ranks. Once there, he wanted to construct his saber to represent both his Mandalorian heritage and his Jedi heritage, so he created the unique Darksaber. After that, the stakes get even higher. We see Grogu with the reflections of blue and green lightsabers in his eyes. This is clearly where we're going to see who rescued Grogu from the Jedi Temple. Was it Jocasta Nu, was it Quinlan Vos, or could it even be the Bad Batch? Only time will tell, but this was certainly one of the biggest theories from the Mandalorian in Season 2, so I think we'll get a clear answer here once and for all. Next we get another huge shot mirroring the one we see in the Book of Boba Fett of Order 66 inside the Jedi Temple. In this shot there are four Jedi, where the Book of Boba Fett one appeared to have only three. In the Book of Boba Fett one we were also in a different hallway, actually the one where Barriss Offee's room was because we saw her crest. This appears to be a different location, maybe on the path of Grogu's escape. At the door we can see what looks to be a lightsaber piercing through and attempting to break into the hall. This can really only be one of two people. Either it is the Grand Inquisitor who we know turned on the Jedi Order before Order 66 and helped Anakin to slaughter all of his Jedi Guard brothers, or it is Anakin Skywalker himself. With Hayden Christensen barely doing anything in the Kenobi show really, I think they may have used some of his shooting time for the Mandalorian, and we may finally see him inside the temple in live action. That would be absolutely incredible. I mean, we did see that in Kenobi, but I mean, come on. The 
commandos where it's at. Defending the hall at the front could also be the legendary Jedi Battlemaster Sindralic. If you look carefully, it does kind of look like him, and the green lightsaber colour he that he wields also matches perfectly. After that, we see a fleet of what look to be TIE interceptors rushing towards some type of outpost, following Din's N1 Naboo Starfighter. It's after this shot where we see what appears to be a droid-only cantina, an exact reverse of the A New Hope cantina scene where all droids were banned. In here we get the RA-7 protocol droids, we get astromechs, and incredibly awesomely, a group of three B1 battle droids, still operational and enjoying their time after the war. This is major because all B1 battle droids were given the droid shutdown order by Anakin Skywalker in Revenge of the Sith on Mustafar, and only very few of them were able to disobey this order. This makes these droids extremely important on the galactic scale. They could also be members of the droid Gotra, which was basically a criminal mafia organization run by droids who were heavily anti-human. Next is an awesome shot of the newly rebuilt Children of the Watch clan dropping out of their ship before rushing out into the city center of what looks to be Navarro. Now I have to mention that Paz Vizsla the Mandalorian Heavy looks epic, but there is another huge detail here. On the left is the statue plinth where IG-11 was displayed after his destruction in earlier episodes. On the bottom you can see Stormtrooper helmets sculpted there, symbolizing him standing on them and defeating them. But the interesting thing here is that the statue is gone, only a few rebar spikes remain. This means that some really early rumours about a huge mech suit being constructed out of IG-11's statue, and Grogu riding inside of that statue may actually be true. After that is a shot of Babu Frick's species, and we already know that Babu himself is showing up in the season, so get hyped for that I guess. If you're a big Rise of Skywalker fan, there you go. If you're not, well... How bad can it be? We then move on to what looks to be the Mines of Mandalore where Din must go to cleanse himself. These caves have a beautiful green tint, and inside appears to be a huge creature which threatens both him and Grogu. The costume isn't the greatest, but the thing definitely does look terrifying. And then we see Grogu finally putting his training with Luke to good use, pounding the massive creature to the ground, most likely to defend Mando. The creature also appears to be holding some sort of fish thing, but I have no idea if that is relevant to Mando's quest or not. Either way, it appears that this is going to be a very interesting season. And if we know Know anything about these trailers, it's that they only show stuff from the first two episodes, which means all of this hype and action is nowhere near the full picture. I fully expect appearances from Ahsoka, Thrawn since he was mentioned last season, and probably even Luke again now that they have the deepfake technology pretty well down, but overall let me know what you think of this trailer and if you're hyped for the season to come. Who do you think is going to be the biggest appearance and what do you think is going to happen? Thanks so much for watching guys, really hope you enjoyed the video, if you did leave a like and subscribe to join the Star Force, if you did leave a like subscribe and join the Star Force for more awesome Mandalorian and Star Wars lore content, peace out. And if you made it this far, thank you so much and make sure you drop a thank Mr. Grogu in the comments down below just to let me know you made it.